All right, we're getting there. We're going to get to the point here where we do uh, actually start our reading and doing some little exercises with some, with some fun little uh, songs and things I've written to put together to help you to become a better sight reader. Um, <clears throat> and I'm almost finished with this kind of background thing that we must understand in order to progress and to proceed. Okay? In the previous video, we learned about the reading and the playing level. Okay? So what happens, what happened, a lot, this is kind of like a psychologist when they want you to tell them about, or a psychiatrist, tell me about your childhood. You know, we go back, uh, because a lot of things are formed from that beginning, and that's really true, in, in, even in uh, learning an instrument. Maybe you're 50 or 60 years old or older, some of the habits you learned when you were 8 or 9 or 10 are still with you. You know, fortunately or unfortunately, or however, whatever the case may be. Um, this is what happened. We need to know what happened in order that we may not repeat the same mistakes. We need to change and retrain your brain and how you look at the music. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, uh, and because, you know, the way you did it when you were a kid is the same way you're still doing it, probably. Okay? And that's why I have here ear and memorization versus reading the music. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Reading music takes zero musical talent. Zero ability. Okay? You don't have to have a musical bone in your body. You can learn to read music. Every dot corresponds to a key on the piano, right? Uh, flat or sharp, you raise or lower it. Rhythms are mathematical divisions with, uh, of a beat. And uh, it's all very uh, doable without having any musical training. And this is what we're trying to develop. The problem is, <clears throat> when we're learning to read music, we're also using our ear and memorization. This is what I did when I was a kid. Okay? I would have a piece of music, or a page in the book. Okay? My teacher, my sweet, sweet old teacher who uh, taught me piano, would give me one page assignment. All right? She would play it for me. I'd listen to it. Uh, I, I could read the notes, but I would also listen to what she did and just copy it, you know, and uh, be able to get by. If I see the notes are going up, then I go to the right. If I see the notes going down, I go to the left. I can pick it out. I can fake the left hand because, uh, you know, wrong bass notes, you can really hear that. That doesn't sound good. So I'd had a lot of little tricks, and not on purpose. It was just my way of learning. Um, and I would play a little bit, one measure. I could read well enough to get through that one measure, okay? Just really slow, you know, all cows eat grass, every good boy does fine. That's what I, what I used. And I would get through that one measure and I'd memorize it. I would memorize it and I wouldn't need to look at the music. And so I didn't. I looked down at my hands. Okay, got it down. What now? Next measure. Went to the second measure, did the same thing. I used my ear and then I memorized. I used my ear with, along with my very poor sight reading skills. Uh, and did that enough to well, I memorized it, and then I would move on to the next measure. Okay? Memorization, ear memorization, versus reading. Now, re the reason I put verses is because these two things fight each other, okay? They are at war when you first start. If you have a good ear, if you're musically talented, they're going to fight each other. If you don't have a teacher that's holding you back, making sure that you're reading the notes, not letting you skip over as we learn from that beginning stage, from the beginner stage, skipping over to somewhere in the late intermediate or intermediate or even advanced, and skipping over those, those really important years where we really learn how to read, okay? And they fight each other. On this side, <clears throat> I have a diagram. I'm not an artist. I used to be somewhat of an artist, but uh, this is an ear, all right? And over here I have the eyes, all right? They fight each other. The ear of a very talented person is very strong, all right? And it's not necessarily uh, means you're a bad reader, but your reading is going to be weak, okay? Because they're, reading the staff is not easy, and the ear is going to want to take over. It's going to be the strong arm. It's going to be the thing that wants to be dominant over the reading, all right? And it's going to win if you let it, and it will probably win uh, if you have a good ear, if you don't have anybody watching out for you or who, who knows to watch out for you. The ear's going to win. The ear's going to take over. And if we try to start this sight reading thing, and I'm trying to retrain you 
and we're using your ear, it's going to hurt this over here. It's going to keep us from reading. It's going to, because this is so strong. Over the years, you've developed your ear. You've developed your hear what chords sound like, what happens next, and you can't not use it. It's too hard. I'll say that again. You can't not use it. So what we do to make this reading better, since you're already in this state that you're in, is we take out the ear. I'm going to write down, we're going to have the staff on this whiteboard. I'm going to have some things written out. We're not going to use our ear because it's not going to sound like a song that you've heard. Okay? We take the ear out of it, and therefore, the only thing we have left are the eyes. The only thing we have left is the sight reading. So that sight reading has to step up because the ear can't, because the ear doesn't know what the song sounds like. Because we're going to do songs that you haven't heard because I've written them and you haven't heard them ever before in your life. So <laughs> you're not going to be able to use that. My point is, a good ear will hurt you. If you have a good ear and you're trying to learn to read music, the ear will hurt you if you know what it sounds like because you can't make it not help you out, okay? So that's what we're going to do. It's kind of like if someone has a, a bad eye, a lazy eye or an eye that's, that's not as strong as the other one, what do they do? They put a patch over the weak eye. I mean, they put a patch over the strong eye, okay? And the strong eye is gone. So the weak eye is forced to step up. The weak eye is forced to uh, make compensation and to become stronger so that it's as strong as that strong eye. And then when it gets to a certain point, they take the patch off. Well, the same thing here. The ear is so strong in you guys uh, that we need to do things that you're not going to be able to use it easily on. Okay, so that you have to read. And the eyes are big there because it's going to strengthen this side. The ear and the reading will fight each other. The ear's going to win unless we take it out of the equation. Now, after you play through some of the little exercises, little songs I have, and you memorize them, I'm not going to let you stay on it. You've got to go to a new one. That's why I'm going to have tons and tons and tons of new ones because your ear is so good, you're going to memorize it up. Oh, Move on. We're going to go on to something else so that you have to keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. And the ear is good. The ear will help us, but we're not going to let it help us in the beginning for a long time. We're going to keep forward with the reading until that is strengthened, until we get it up to where your playing level and your reading level are more closer together, like on the graph that we did uh, in the previous little speech, okay? There's going to be one more thing, one more video, that's going to have the uh, seven principles of good sight reading. And this is all my stuff. This is something I came up with uh, myself. I was a horrible sight reader, and I've come up with this kind of uh, criteria and uh, lesson plan that I've used on all of my students. I first used it on myself. Uh, it works, worked really well. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to do it. Check out my website, webpianoteacher.com. I'm going to have lots of stuff on there for you for your sight reading and, and lots of other cool things too. But uh, study this. Don't skip over these videos where I'm explaining this to you. You need it. You need to understand what the problem is so that we can fix it and not repeat the same mistakes. Okay? So here the lesson is ear memorization versus reading. We're going to read and we're going to cancel this out so that this reading can become stronger in these lessons. All right? So understand, your ear is good, your ear will help you, but we need to put it on the, on the back burner for a while while we work on our reading skills, okay?